Get ready for Real Talk with Pastor B in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Real Talk with Pasha B. Uh, this is Pasha B, and we are in the studio once again. It's been a while since we have talked to you, but we are back. We are back, and Shanika, of course, is here. I am here. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Shanika. Hey, girl. Hey, I missed you, girl. I missed you, girl, too. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Shanika? Can we talk about first? What a beautiful day in Atlanta it is. It is gorgeous. It is, it is gorgeous. Fall has finally it arrived. Is. But, so I'm just but it's super, hot though. Super but hold on. I'm going to say this. It's not 90 degrees. No, it's about 90. I'm going to say this. What's so funny is I always toss it to Shanika. Mm-hmm. She never catches the shit. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing has changed. I tossed it to her. You're supposed to go into what the topic was, and then you were supposed to probably say, you know, before we get on that, can we? Can I? No, no but I tossed it. What a beautiful you. day it is. Can we introduce people? We're. It's called the build up. It's called the build up. <laughs> but I tossed it to you. Nothing has changed. I tossed it to you, Shanika. What are we talking changed. about? <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about polyamory. Polyamory. Now, are we talking about polyamory or are we talking about poly relationships? Mm. Well, let's just say Mm. Mm. I did my research. Mm. I did my research. You did. did. So let me go ahead and introduce our guests. You better. Guests. (laughs) They're going to break it down because in doing my research, when I tell you I was overwhelmed because I thought it was one thing, Mm -hmm. but it's a lot of different things under an umbrella. And apparently there are rules and regulations to this thing. <laughs> there are ethics. <laughs> Morals <laughs> and guidelines. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> our guest today is Naisha and her... Partner? Partner. Partner Brian. <laughs> like it was yes. going to be a different term. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Brian. Brian's on the phone hey, with us. Hey, hey, how are you? Brian. Hey Brian. Okay, so Shanika. So they're going to first of all, should we get should we define please? Let's let's get some definitions. Please. First. Um, I'm I'm curious before we define. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you curious about, Naisha? <laughs> yes. What when you went out and did your research, before you went out and did your research, what did you think it was? Both of you. I'm gonna say that I didn't know how. It was broken down to Mm -hmm. where there were different, I'm going to use the word variables, under poly relationships. I think ignorance has us to believe that polygamy Mm -hmm. is what it is. And Mm -hmm. it's just like kind of defined by who's ever involved in it. That was ignorance, I'm going to tell you. Um, But doing my research, there is a huge difference in the vast, I guess, different lifestyles under the umbrella. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like Shanika said, there's rules and regulations. And yes. I didn't know about all those rules and regulations. The triads, the poly, polyquads, is that? Polycule. Polycules, and I'm like... Quads. Quads. And what did yes. you think it Poly was? solo, I heard. So, solo yes, poly. Yes. Solo, see, I'm saying shit backwards. <laughs> so they just single mess around with everybody. <laughs> actually what it is I don't think that's what it is her face yeah so what did you think it was what I thought it was I I likened it to open relationships Mm. like we're together when we're together and we're not we're not oh I see I see so that pretty much was my understanding of poly relationships I see I see so uh would you care to educate us you or Brian um Brian do you want to go first or uh, sure. Um, I, I definitely agree with the fact that people's research and all that, uh, depending on your experience, depending on, you know, what circles you're in or what social or, or whatever media outlets you pay attention to, uh, people usually think it's related to open relationships or it's just swinging or it's just like swinging, uh, things like that. Um, for me, uh, polyamory and, and dating in, in, in those spaces is really just, uh, dating multiple people with the consent of everyone, right? It's, it's for relationships, mm. it's for building those connections, but just with the consent. And when you talk, you, you mentioned a, a key word, ethics. Um, doing it ethically, you know, where and a lot of people cheat, 
and they'll say, well, I was already in a poly relationship because my man or my woman cheated on me. And hey, we did that for a number of years. Uh, that's not poly. Right. Um, unethical behavior is definitely not poly at all. It's, uh, it's all in about caring and caring for your partners and, and with the consent of everybody. Now, I'm glad he said with the consent of because, again, through the research process, some people would liken it to say, well, you are already in a poly relationship if you had a side piece and all of this stuff. And my face or my thought process was always, "Ah, I didn't think that would be included as a poly relationship because everybody's not consenting to being in this type of situation. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's exactly true. Uh, Without that, without the understanding and knowledge that that you're actually in a a non-monogamous relationship, it is not and should not be considered poly. But a lot of people, to your point, they, they believe that's what it is. Uh, so people outside shun it, you know, and they say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to be in that because I don't want to be cheated on. I don't want to have, to your point, side pieces and have all these things going on outside of uh, what they are aware of. You know, they don't want to participate in that. Yeah. You know, um, my my thought has always been, um, I, I've never really believed in monogamy um, since I was a young adult. Uh, it was always very weird to me, particularly because there were so many uh, um, failed relationships due to infidel- infidelities. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always thought, one, um, when I, uh, I'm going to say when I was like maybe 22, I was like, man, I would really love to be in a relationship with a man and a woman. Polly will allow that. Polyamory allows that. Ah! Hold up. So you were literally chilling one day and said, huh? No, 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 no. I've been I've been bisexual or want or attracted to women since I was twelve. Okay. No, but my question a, is you said a man and a woman. Right. At the same time. Yeah. So that thought came to your Yeah, head. my first relationship was unethical. Okay. With a woman. And uh, I was married at the time. Okay. And um, I was like, well. But I snuck around and did it. Mm -hmm. It was wrong. Wrong on so many levels. Uh, But I wanted both of them. Okay. You know, I wanted wanted to spend time with her. And I wanted to spend time with him. And I wanted him to be accepting of it. She was accepting of it. He wasn't? No, because he was. Well, why is your face screwed up? Be, because you, you know, know most I should. Well, he wasn't not... accepting of. There's a most men that I. Brian is literally the first man that I've dated that's been like, I ha, I did date one man that was like, okay, but I want to be involved every once in a while. Brian is the first man that I dated that's like okay to the relate to a whole relationship, not just the sexual piece. Got. And so that's where I was going. Yeah, because her, her, right. her head was in the mud. Her whole, yeah, because it's a whole, whole lot of men that want to see yeah, two yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. But there, you forget there's so much more. Yes. It's a whole ass relationship. Yes. It's not yeah, a... Most guys, most guys can't even be with one and, and satisfy one. They definitely don't want to try to be in a relationship with two women. Right. Uh, and, at the same time. And, right. and And fulfill those emotional needs. And right. Those, uh, those physical needs. Can you imagine have two of you? Two of you? Could two of you? No. Nope. Brian don't want two of me. He <laughs> probably wants something like a little bit. Something to balance you yeah. out a little bit. Brian. You're a yeah. ball of energy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Thank you. <laughs> so, Brian, I have a question for you. Um, sure. When did you entertain the idea of being in a poly relationship? Like at about um, well, what I, age? I knew and realized that I was non-monogamous probably around the same time Naisha said around, I was like 12 or 13 when I didn't, I didn't understand why you had to choose between girls. You know, you, you're not in a real relationship. You just say, hey, I, I like I like girls. Mm-hmm. Why do I have to choose when I want to be in a, a relationship with one? Why do I have to choose between a couple? Um, and so even at 12, I remember... Um, having that conversation with a best friend of mine at the time. And uh, and I was with one girl and she had a friend. And I was like, well, okay, why do I have to choose? I'll just be wealthy. And, you know, it was all kiddies, and all in fun. But later on in life, I realized that non-monogamy, I mean, monogamy just wasn't, didn't fit well with me. 
I didn't understand the concept of it. Um, I didn't understand the um, the necessity for it. Um, it seemed pretty possessive. Um, and so, especially when my background, a lot of relationships that I saw growing up were non-monogamous. It just was a lot of cheating. Like most people that I knew that were married had girlfriends on the side. And so seeing that growing up, I thought, why is that the norm? Which it seemed to be. Why isn't it the norm in, in public? You know, why is it always, why is it hidden and, and, and secret? And so, um, so similar to, to when I used to say it, and a lot of people have this kind of path. Um, I thought monogamy was the only way. I got married in a monogamous marriage, uh, but I knew I was non-monogamous. And so there was some unethical behavior, some cheating uh, but behind that while I, did, while I uh, did my own research on non-monogamy has to be a thing, right? I didn't know about poly. I didn't know about any of that. And eventually I came upon poly. And a friend of mine introduced me to a show it was like married and dating or something like that. And I watched the show and I said, yep, that's exactly what I've been saying since I was 12. And, um, and so that kind of started my, my journey and my research. And I did that for, for a couple of years. And, uh, and then I realized that poly was definitely the lifestyle that, that was for me. So how long have you, uh, Brian, actively been living a poly lifestyle? Actively, uh, I would say about three years. Okay. And Aisha? Um, about two. Okay. Yeah. So before I I was swinging, uh, swinging or like, can we talk about that? Yeah. One sure. time for the trapeze. <laughs> Don't go to trapeze. <laughs> Come out with some, some something else. <laughs> so tell us, and when I say let's talk about that, so um, can you explain? Because a lot of people, again, mm-hmm. prior to research, mm-hmm. ignorance, yeah, would group. All poly, I'm sorry, swinging. And swingers, yes. yeah. They they fall under the umbrella of non-monogamy. Okay. Um, and I would probably consider myself non-monogamous mm-hmm. more than polyamorous. Um, I'm in the spectrum of like polygamist, um, but polygamist, uh, as Brian and I talk about a lot, polygamists don't sleep with their sister wives. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want a relationship. You know, they don't have relationships. They don't do, they have relationships, but not romantic relationships. Um, so, um, swing, there's plenty of poly people that are not swingers. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's plenty of swingers that aren't poly. Mm-hmm. So, they're two totally different things. What did you want to talk about about it? There's so just many the, things. Just the, the, the difference in giving that <clears throat> clear definition of okay this is what a non-monogamy lifestyle looks like Mm -hmm. this is what polygamy looks like Mm -hmm. okay so swinging is defined so swinging is uh pretty much um a a couple that may go out and they may meet another couple or a single woman or a single man and it's a consensual sex between those individuals um it could be uh to couple swinging, um, which is called a swap. Uh, full, there's all kind of different swaps. There's a full swap. There's a soft swap. Uh, there's um, women that are uh, in these spaces that just kind of like to come in and get their O's on. You know, they want to get their screw on. They want to get taste taste a couple different. You mm-hmm. know, they got taste of Atlanta coming up next weekend. Oh. <laughs> so- <laughs> <laughs> so it's something like that, you know, there are men, they're called, they're men that come in and they, you know, some men uh, like to see their wives uh, being pleasured by their men. Those are called cockolds. And so, Wait, hold up, hold up. So, Naish, you're going to find out I'm real slow, right? I process. <laughs> you're not, slow. you're not. So, let me back up. Uh-huh. Is there really a thing called Taste of Atlanta and people come to Girl, town? no. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, it's okay. taste of for real taste okay. of Atlanta. I was just using it. it as a word on play. I was a metaphor, dummy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because I'm sitting here. I'm like, sorry. Here we go. It's a metaphor. First of all, I know they have like hookup parties they and things do. like that. They you do. Know, so they do. They do. We know. didn't. I didn't know if they had a convention coming to town. I'm just asking the question. I almost choked on this one. I'm and just that, saying. They do have swing conventions see, though. See. They do. Do they have some, do they have swing? Shh, I'm not even gonna. No. I'm not even going to. I'm thank, not even thank going you, to. Thank you, Naisha. People, they do have swing conventions. You think they would name so, a taste of Atlanta? I don't know. What that's kind 
it. That's, it would. It, that's it's catchy. Kind, don't get me wrong. That is kind of catchy, though. But when but I'm sure the, the real taste report. of Atlanta, Atlanta would have a problem. Yeah. Exactly. See, Brian, you see how they jumping on me? I think I had a valid question. <laughs> I'm just no, I think I absolutely desire. Brian, she should have kept. She should have kept. Brian, she should have. Brian, she should have kept that to an off-the-air ah, question. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, but what I'm hearing you say about swingers, it's based upon sex. Yes, it is definitely yeah. sex only. There's no relationships to it. There's no love yeah. People to might it with people my... might form friendships. In yeah, space, yeah. But it's, it's definitely not based on. It's based on the physical act. It's just. Is um like people play they have play parties and, and events, and um in my opinion, mon- uh, I would say swinging is mostly monogamous because outside of swing spaces, people are one on one with each other, couples go and, and live very monogamous looking lives, and then they go to events and they do non monogamous activities like sex with other people and things like that. But uh, for the most part, it's just sex. Gotcha. And Polly has a, a lot to do with love and then okay. love and being able to share that space. Okay. Would um how would you define your relationship? What are the Brian rules and, and regulations to your relationship? Um so I have let, let me just rewind on something real quick. When I first said, I wanna I want a poly relationship, I want a, I want a relationship with a man and a woman. I want to be able to openly love a man and a woman. <laughs> And a relationship. And I want us to love each other. And I want us to create businesses and travel and raise our kids and and all of that. And um that's what that's what I wanted. And so mine was that basic. It literally was that basic. Um, I would read like articles or maybe like, you know, watch YouTube things. Um I did not, when I first came into, uh, started being like joining Facebook groups and talking to different people, I did not do the type of in-depth um, like research. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like I wanted what I wanted to remain very untarnished. I wanted it to to be as basic as I thought, like, I want to love a man and I want to love a woman. Like nobody does research on monogamy. Right. So I didn't understand, you know, when I first started joining groups, they're like, read this book, read this book, read this book, read this book. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do all that. So there are some things that I am still a little uh, ignorant on. Um, so to define our relationship, um, I would say <laughs> we are non-monogamous. Um we are poly, um, but I wouldn't necessarily say polyamorous because polyamorous, if I go out there today and I go across the street to the coffee house and I meet a guy and I connect with him, polyamorous would say I should be able to connect with him, exchange numbers and see what's up. Same thing for Brian. He's at the gas station. He sees somebody, a little fat booty. He's like, oh, let me go check this out. So, but that's not really the way our dynamic works. Our What we would like is a closed triad or closed-ish triad. And you put ish on the end. Explain that to me. I'm going to let Brian talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, babe. Alley-oop. <laughs> no, no, it's all, it's, all, it's all good. Um, I'm, I'm catching it. I'm catching it. Uh, <laughs> Brian can catch it. Yes, he can. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> Continue, Brian. You've been passing conversations to me multiple times over. I know, I know how to kiss it. <laughs> um, yes, you do. Now, I will, <laughs> I will say, I will say. <laughs> I'm going to give a little. Right back I'm going to add a little bit to what I used to say. Um, I believe that um, as far as the uh, our dynamic, it is mostly on a on a polyamorous side because uh, of the type of dynamic we want. We want to try at, which is a poly dynamic, a polyamorous dynamic. Um, we don't have any. I won't say rules and regulation, but there, in every dynamic, you got to have understanding. Mm-hmm. You have to have um, boundaries, right? That you that mm-hmm. you uh, decide is best for your relationship. But you should do that in monogamy too. Yeah, you, know, you talk about what what is okay, what's not okay. Some monogamous folks believe that you shouldn't have certain types of friends or maybe an, uh, 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 an exorbitant amount of friends of the opposite sex. 
some people are okay with it. You know, you have to have those boundaries and you have to establish those. Um, so for us, when she says we want a close-ish <laughs> relationship, <laughs> it's because, um, uh, and I'll give a little background real quick. Uh, I also wanted the same thing going into our relationship. I wanted a, a relationship with two women. Um, after having dated multiple women, I realized that the kind of love and attention and, and time I wanted to spend was my capacity with two women, right? That I wanted to care for was in that way. And so, um, fast forward to I try that. The, um, the close issues being with the three of us together, but still going in other spaces like maybe a swing space. Or uh, maybe space. we would, maybe we would, because I have a background in swing as well. And so, we're comfortable in those spaces and in our relationship as a triad, we'd hope that all three of us would be comfortable in that space and entertain the activities that go on in those spaces. Um, and so that's why I would be closed. It's closed, completely closed. There's no entertaining anybody else. It's just the three of you. That's all you do. No dating, no, no, no sex, no anything with anybody else. But we, we're open to some of that. Um, not fully, but there's some, there's some options there. So the triad will be, Brian, Naisha, and another woman. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm at my capacity, I'm in. Brian keeps me super busy. So I'm at my capacity. Like, I don't, and it's not just him keeping me busy, right? On like a physical level, it's like him keeping me busy on a mental level, on a spiritual level. And so I I don't even look at other men. On a physical level. God she said, said that first thing. I said, he like, make sure they see you know. <laughs> no, he does. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, um, like, I don't even look at other men the same way. Like, in my prior relationships, I might be like, oh. You know? <laughs> but, um, I'm full. Like, my tank is full with him in so many different ways. Um, so... And you guys yeah. have a long distance relationship. We do. So, yeah. how right. does how does that affect? Um, <laughs> I will you or me, babe. <laughs> I, I go. I go first. So, okay. they, I think the long distance relationship definitely impacts the ability to get through some of the challenges of a relationship. So, the times that we have disagreements or things like that. You know, if she was local, it'd be easy to reconnect. It'd be easy to make up. It'd be easy to kind of give care and show that kind of care in person. Um, so now we have to find more innovative ways <laughs> to do that. Um, sometimes it takes a little longer than, than we would like. But uh, but we, we definitely have to do more dating, you know, remotely. Um, we do. And, and Naisha has a, um, has a date. I'm sure she can uh, give some details on that we had a, a, a little while ago, a movie date. But we do a lot of dating, um, and but it does impact our ability to connect as, as much as we, we like to. Um, physical touch is one of our lo- love languages, so not being able to do that is difficult. Well, so I feel like, one, I- I've been in a long-distance relationship before. Uh, I don't know. I dated someone long-distance. I wouldn't call it a relationship. Um, and no, I was in a long-distance relationship with a woman, but... Uh, it didn't last for very long. Then I was in, I was dating a guy for like six months. And I feel like long distance creates a um a space for you like to really get to know someone mm-hmm. on not on a non-intimate level. And even when we have disagreements, it creates a space where we have to talk. Now, I'm a big proponent of um Let's have sex, and then let's come back and talk about it. Um, I know we're angry with each other, but let's soften things up, and let's have sex, and then come back and talk about it because your emotions are, um, I'm sorry, your uh, defenses are lowered. Um, You've got some endorphins. (laughs) (laughs) You've got some endorphins that are released. Um, You're softer to each other. Um, you're just less tense. And I like I'm, how you breaking that down. Yeah, I'm serious. Everybody needs to take note. I'm trying to tell you, it it works. Have sex first while you're mad, then come back and address and the not, situation. And I'm not talking about, um, like, screwing. Like, you're not talking about fucking. I'm not talking about no, that. No, she said I'm passionate. talking about love. just... Like, like, figure out a way to dig where you love that person. Like, you, you are you going to break up? We breaking up? Are we breaking up? 
if we're not breaking up, then, you I know. I like Naisha was asking me that. Like, put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm like, damn, are we breaking up? I didn't even know we were together. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, because if we're not, then let me, let's find that love right quick. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm a big proponent of that. Um, um, that's something that Brian and I don't get to practice. So we have to talk. Right. And sometimes we have talked until like five o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. We get on the phone at like seven and we're talking it out. That's the one thing yeah. when I tell you, oof, that's the one thing I love about Brian is that he does not care that we have to talk. I have to talk it out. Sometimes I feel like he might want to be like, hey, I just need a break. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but he doesn't mind talking it out with me, you know, and sometimes we're in a circular reasoning, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We're not even like really talking about the issue. Sometimes we're talking about some other crap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's sometimes how <laughs> discussions go or arguments go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, we, call, we, we call that being in the weeds. In the weeds. Um, mm-hmm. we, sometimes mm-hmm. we get in the weeds as opposed to talking about the root of it. Yeah. But but uh, but, but what long distance has done is definitely increased our communication. This has matured yes. our communication. Yes, matured like tenfold. it. Yeah, tenfold. So it, we thought we were good communicators before us. Got gotcha. you. Yes, right, right. And, and I would under, I would understand how that would reveal itself because mm-hmm. that's all you have to do. Majority of the time is communicate. Yes. Like, what is your emotional maturity like? Mm-hmm. What you know? How how do you handle conflict resolution? Mm-hmm. Yes, a long distance relationship. A long distance poly relationship is going to reveal all of that. (laughs) So, and and also because it's a long distance poly relationship. So, who's able to go out on dates? Well, we both can. Yeah, we both can. Um, But we, I can, if I dated a woman here, it would be like a woman that would be like prepared to eventually move to the DMV area. Uh, Brian goes out. Brian's been out on a lot of dates. Um, but um, there's no but about it. But we vet. Got you. Um, Both vet. Yeah. So Brian might, but Brian vets way more than I do because Brian just has the patience of an elephant. <laughs> and so I don't necessarily have all that patience for women. I'd be like, uh, check, check, check. Nope. All right. Bye. Brian will be like, check, check. Maybe let's talk about it a little bit more. Check, check, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be like, on the first thing, I'll be like, nah, I'm good. Got it. <laughs> so, and we date. We started dating a lot more together. Um, before Brian dated a a lot, like I wouldn't say a lot, but he dated before. Like I would have a chance to meet them, and so our dynamic has matured and shifted. You know, based on our experiences together. So, give me an example. Yeah, we definitely, uh, we definitely had. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just saying that. We, yeah, we definitely had. Uh, we tried, you know, dating one way, and then we were like, mm-hmm. oh, that's that's kind of working. Mm-hmm. Let's shift a little bit. Yeah. And then we dated another way, and then um, and now the way that we've been, uh, and I, I'll say that's like dating, but courting. Yeah. To lead to dating. Yeah. Um, so the way that we've been courting uh, women um, and engaging them. Has definitely been um, definitely more both of us uh, uh, earlier on in the process, and uh, and it's, it's been working well. Mm-hmm. So set it up for me how dating would happen. Um, let's would Brian find someone or come across someone in the DMV that he's interested in, and then you would fly up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he might find him online, okay, in the group, or I mean. It is, we've not done this yet, but mm-hmm. he might meet someone gotcha. out and um, and then he'll like talk to her and he'll, you know, um, he'll say, you know, hey, well, it's it's almost like kind of getting like the um, the things out of the way. Like, are you, are you bi? Are you interested in a relationship with a woman? Um, have you, do you know what poly is? Are you interested in poly? And if those yeah. kind of things check out, then he'll. He'll continue conversation with her and then he'll say, hey, um, I'd like to connect you with my lady. And then she'll say, okay. And then we start group chatting and uh, we'll start all talking and kind of connecting on that end. Um, What we found, and uh, Brian, you can can, um, back me up on this or... um, 
But uh, yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> but what we found is that a lot of women, um, particularly bisexual women, it's very easy to make the connection with the man. Um, some, not all, but it's very easy to make the connection with the man. So our connection is pretty um, important. Um, not more yeah, important I, than his, but it's important. Yeah, I would say that... Um to the point about me dating or, or courting women. So it, it typically was and has been me, you know, meeting someone and, and very transparent up front because transparency is big, big. and poly, you know, yeah. uh, letting folks know what your intentions are, who you are, what you're, you know, what you're into. So I usually just tell people out the, out the gate, first conversation, you know, I'm poly, um, you know, making sure that whether they're either poly or if they've been considering it or something along the lines. Uh, so some of those, some of those initial questions happen. And then once we get through that first phase, um, there is a, 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 a initial introduction to Naisha and, um, and and to the point of is this working or is this uh, does this have potential? We just kind of kind of go down that road. Um, I I like Naisha just said. I do believe that women connect in many different ways than men. Like if we have if men and women have like five points that we need to connect on, I think women connect on like fifteen to twenty. You know, and so that connection and that relationship is very important to start off early. Uh, and that's something that we noticed along the way is that even if I engaged Naisha early on, or oh, I'm sorry, if everybody was engaged with each other early on, if I went out with them or if I talked to them more often or something like that, they would lean toward mm-hmm. me and and not focus as much on connecting with Naisha. Um, and so like, I'm trying to focus start, on getting this long, right? <laughs> the long scroll. So we had to, <laughs> we had to, we had to figure out how to, how to figure out that balance, you know. And so, um, so yeah, it's definitely been she connecting early on after after I initially engaged. So how do you both meet, Brian and I? Yeah, in a group, in a poly group. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, I slid uh, him. I slid him. He DM. slid in his DM. <laughs> I was like, hey. But honestly, I was gonna, I was gonna inbox him, which is very strange. Like, I don't, I never had inboxed the guy, mm-hmm. but he was like saying some, some things online, and I was like, oh, he, he's not like a, a one of them online bandits. Like, he's not like one of those guys that's like always online and like responding and things like that. But he said something. I was like, oh, he's, I like that, you know. And I was looking for a couple initially. And um, I dated a couple couples. Um, I was I was open to a man, of course, as well, or a woman. Um, but um, then he slid into my DMs, and then, you know, such is history. And how long have you both been together? Our anniversary is 11-11. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coming up. Coming mm-hmm. up. All right. Yeah. I like it. So, getting back to the clothes-ish. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is there is some aspect of monogamy in a closed-ish relationship. Well, monogamy means one. Mono? One. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let me say that differently. <laughs> Dang. Well, I got passion two point oh no. to me. <laughs> so <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. Can, no. can, can, can we, fight me, girl? Can we okay. just elbow? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, it's okay. No. It, Everybody who listening know what I meant. <laughs> so. It's fidelity. It's fidelity. poly fidelity. Mm. So yeah. there's an aspect of fidelity. <laughs> In your relationship. There is. Okay. Yep. So my question is, how is it that you can give your time and attention to the two, but in a monogamous relationship, <laughs> that seems to be uh, challenging because you're still limiting who you give your time and attention to, as opposed to an open, in my head, an open relationship is whoever comes along, even mm-hmm. if, it, you know, it's consenting. I'm, I'm open to whoever comes along. But you're still <laughs> limiting yourself to two people. There's still a limitation there. Mm-hmm. So how do you, earlier you said you found, yourself, you found it difficult to, you know, s- settle with one person, mm-hmm. but you can settle with two. 
there still a, there still is an aspect of settling and limitations. So remember Brian said earlier, he's, he started speaking about um, his love capacity mm-hmm. um, and how he's able to love two women mm-hmm. and what he wanted for himself. Um, it's, it's, some, it's the same aspect, so to speak. So if you understand that my capacity is to love two people this way, okay. you know, this big, this wide. Got it. Um, you know, um, but I don't have the capacity to love a third person uh, okay. beside myself, you know, okay. but I don't have a capacity to love four people or five people. Some people have that capacity. They have the capacity to love eight people. In some way. Shit, I can't even love one. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh. No, she's not. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, that takes some difficulty. So it does. It really does take some difficulty. So, my capacity is to love two people. Um, I still, but, you know, some people, some people have the capacity to love a lot more. So, Brian elaborated on that earlier. Mm-hmm. That his capacity, the way he wants to be loved and how he wants to give love is for two. Okay. Um, also, look at me looking like this. <laughs> how does your family feel about your lifestyle? Um, so my friends um, are my family. My very close friends are my family. Uh, the rest of my family is very small. Um, probably the feeling of my friends would probably be more important than my blood family. Gotcha. Uh, so everybody knows except my son. I know. I'm going to tell. Really? I know. I know. I know. I know. My daughter knows. Like every, this, everybody knows. And this is. But you're pretty open. Wait a minute. Like, I am. Yeah, but he's not on my Facebook page. And I don't, I don't really like reveal it on my Instagram because I want it to have like, oh, I want to have a one on one conversation. My my son thinks I'm like Mother Teresa. So I've literally, literally been trying to like shift that opinion of myself to him. Like he thinks I'm a very knowledgeable, um, knowledgeable about sex. Mother Teresa. Like we talk about sex very openly. We talk about relations relationships very openly but he's like oh my mom's not out here tooting it up but I mean I am tooting it up to Brian but I'm not tooting it up to everybody so you don't think your daughter's told him I don't know it's, she has she probably has and she has social media I mean yeah I, uh, I know has. her so she probably she has mentioned has. it she has now how much of it he wants to digest is another yeah, thing yeah that's what he, I think I don't think he's like really because I was like because the last time we were all out my daughter was like yeah ma your, your Facebook page different than your Instagram and we're all out and then he's like oh ma you 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 getting a little raunchy on your Facebook page and mm-hmm. I was like no <laughs> 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 and wh- so let me ask, why did you choose to keep it from your son um, and not your daughter? My daughter, I don't even know. I, I think my daughter is just out there and she's 20 something. And I just felt OK about having that type of conversation with her. My son, they're just different, very different kids. Mm-hmm. And my son is, you know, there's still some of the the uh, traditions that I need to break and not break, but um, educate him on, mm-hmm. you know. And so the rest of my family, they know and they're like, oh, this is cool. And oh, you guys want a girlfriend yet? And I don't know. You know, with my son, I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brian, do yeah. you have any kids? <laughs> I do. Um, so my, I have young kids. So mine are uh, six. Eight and twelve. So the tw- the six and eight year old don't know much about relationships by themselves. So right. to talk about poly didn't make any sense. But I have started talking to my son about non monogamy, not necessarily poly, but non monogamy uh, for a couple of reasons. One, he's starting to see it in the media. So I'd, I'd rather shape his opinion on it than let the media do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he and I talk about you know the capacity to love more than one person akin to, you know, friendships and family and hell, even pets that um that, you know, you're you're allowed in certain spaces to care for more than one. Um and in relationships sometimes people do care for more than one person. Um so he and I have been having those discussions. Um mainly because he'll understand when I is around and if we have a partner, when that partner's around, he'll know what's going on. My my younger two may not understand that. They might just see it as friendship. Um, but as they get older, I plan to have those conversations with them. 
I haven't necessarily come out to like the rest of my family. It's not a, um, it's not a secret, but I don't feel a need to say, Hey everybody, I'm sending this mass text to tell y'all that I am non-monogamous. And, you know? <laughs> and I get it. It's the same thing. Like even for my sexual preference, yeah. I think I mentioned it on my page and people were like, oh, yeah, you like women. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't talk to women that don't like women. And I don't right. feel a need to be yeah. like, Hey, anybody sexual? It's it's interesting I to agree. me. So I just because if you're heterosexual, you don't have to. Yeah, wear, nobody wear vocalizes that. that. You're you heterosexual, so right. Why do I have to? <laughs> even on my even on my page, I posted about Polly and, and my support of it. You know, and so if if people are paying attention, they know. Um, if they need to know, the only people that really need to know, in my opinion, are of course partners, potential partners, um, my my kids, because. Uh, they'll be around them. Um, and then uh, I have an ex, uh, my, my children's mother. So I tell, I've told her and she, she fully accepts and, uh, and is fine with things the way that they, you know, with the lifestyle I've chosen. Um, mainly I told her because I'm going to have people around. I will have another person around um, her children, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, so I've definitely uh, given her that information. But, but beyond that, yeah, I haven't really told anybody else. I probably won't if uh, if we find a potential partner and um, and it progresses, then we'll just have somebody that's another person that's around for the holidays or events. And if anyone asks, I, I have no problem talking about it. Uh, but it's not something I announce or wear a flag for or something like that. So, have there been any poly horror stories? <laughs> <laughs> or bad experiences. Or <laughs> say bad experiences. Oh God! I mean, we date just like regular people would. You know what I'm saying? So right. we all have dating horror stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not really specific to Polly, but um, yeah, I mean, there've been a couple. I would say, um, I'm a I'm a talk about. I mean, they're not. We've had some really great times and we've had some really honest women and we've had some really fun times. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have had some interesting stories. Uh, I think who? And you don't have to say the person's name. No, 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 I'm not. I'm going to talk about um, this one young lady. (laughs) 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 Um. And we started off pretty well, you know, like I I was actually looking at some of our messages maybe like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I think I think I had searched for something in my phone and I came across our feed or a thread. Excuse me. Um, so. <laughs> that drink she drank. <laughs> no. Oh, no. We, we, we well, know what it looks like, though. Uh, <laughs> If you see if you see me do this, that's what it is. You should just. You should, I should have been like. You should just right. You should have gave me the nod. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, so Brian met her online, and um, we talked to her. He, he, I think he might have talked to her maybe for like two days and then like, uh, or maybe longer than that. I'm not sure. And uh, so we started talking. I was like looking at some of our messages. It was like a little flirtatious banter going back and forth. And what Brian will do is after after he's kind of gotten to know them for a couple of days, he might back off a little bit. Um, because typically their engagement is like, you know, boom, boom, boom. The same way you would do, like, if you're mm-hmm. talking to a guy mm-hmm. that you find interesting, um, you're like, oh, I'm waking up. Hey, good morning, handsome. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And all that other mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, um, so she and I were talking mm-hmm. and, uh, it was going well, I thought. And I came to visit, she just not think she went out of town or... I came to visit and she was going out of town and I was like, oh, maybe she had come back in. I don't remember, babe. Um, do you know who I'm talking about, Brian? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, keep talking. <laughs> so we went to her um, place of employment and because I, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I wanted to meet her. You know, I think her and Brian had been out on two dates um, and I was yeah. like, hey, 
you know, I'm here in town. I think you just got back. Like, she didn't really want to make time to meet me, Mm. but she kept asking Brian out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have an issue with it because she and I felt like she and I were connecting. Mm Mm-hmm. And Brian's local, so I get it. Mm-hmm. Like you might want to, like, link, hey, I'm I'm off. You want to mm-hmm. link up? And so, um, I mean, she had she's pretty, you know, nice chocolate brown. You know, she was well traveled, liked to travel, um, didn't want kids. Um, she was uh, a lawyer. You know, I was like, okay, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we'll work with this. And so she, um, after it was like at that visit. She was, like, weird. But I was like, maybe she's just busy. Like, we both said that. Like, maybe she's just busy. (laughs) 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 So, uh, I didn't know, you know? So, uh, all of a sudden, uh, I think, like, probably a couple days later, or maybe when she got back from her visit or her trip or something like that, she started acting like a little funny or like standoffish. I came, I come up for another visit and um, I don't know, Brian, maybe you could fill in the blanks of the story that I'm getting, but she, her, some of the last conversations we had was, I don't really want to, um, Brian was asking her, you know, are you still cool with talking to Naisha? Like what's going on? She was like, I don't really like Naisha. And it was just sudden. It like it literally gut punched me because I liked her. Uh-huh. And it, it took yeah, I, I, I I didn't expect her to say that because she was like, I don't like her questions. And I was like, dude, I've been asking questions like since we first started talking. Like, how am I supposed to get to know you? Mm-hmm. And I know Brian asked questions. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was, even, even initially she was fine with the questions. And yeah. she said she was cool when she answered them. She um and, like, even when she went on vacation, that vacation she was, that night she was talking about, she was sharing pictures. Like, we talked throughout, like, yeah. her trip. Yeah. So, we thought everything was good. And she came back from the trip, and she was just different. Yeah. What, was this her first poly relationship? Yeah. That's, she didn't want you, Naisha. Yeah, she first. did want, well, she look, I'm not done long, with the story. Strong. Okay. <laughs> I'm not done with the story. So, we, she got back, and then she was, so, Brian was, like, trying to, like, pick her brain about what's going on. And she was like, yeah, you know, I'm not really feeling Naisha. I don't really like her. And she was like, I. I I don't like her questions. And then she said something else she didn't like, but it it hurt my feelings for real, for real. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I didn't. Yeah, she, tried to, she tried to flip it actually on Aisha. She was like, Aisha's not really trying. She's asking a lot of questions, but she's not really trying to get to know me. Yeah. So she's not trying to put an effort in trying to get to know me or something silly <laughs> like that. I'm like, come on. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I just talk about asking questions to get to know, but say that she's not trying to get to know you. Yeah. It was crazy. And then at the end, um, Brian was, I think, I forgot what the last conversation was, but she pretty much was like, F your girl, but what's up with you? Oh, oh. You know, like her, I don't know what she said verbatim, but then, shoot, two yeah, weeks ago, she just sent him a friend request. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, right, right after she sent that last, right after she sent that last text, it was like a month later, she, um, she sent another, uh, another DM like, kind of saying, hey, what's up with you? Tell Naisha I say hi. Like, yeah. she didn't say all this other stuff before. Yeah. And then to, to Naisha's point, just two weeks ago, she sent a friend I request. Forgot I forgot about know. the DM, babe. I forgot about the other yeah, DM. The DM yeah. and, but, then, and then tell you that she said hi? She's Maybe she's oh, looking to be a side chick and not right. a... But you would have, you would be surprised as how many women are more comfortable being side chicks mm-hmm. Than in a whole ass mm-hmm. relationship, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. they're so yeah. comfortable with that, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Somebody trying yeah. to love you twice. Yeah, you like yeah. women. That's What's the problem? What's the whole problem? Mm-hmm. Why you want to be a whole side chick? Why you want to be in secret? Is less pressure for you? It is, and you can no responsibility, no responsibility, no lack responsibility. Lack of responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's exactly you what know, it is. And I don't. Yeah, I think with her it was definitely that because she she had been in relationships, but I, don't, I think she was cool with moving freely, and so she just kind of wanted to be around when 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 feeling was right. You know, it's not necessarily to do it do a, a permanent thing. But you know what's crazy is that I feel like if that was like if she just want to like chill, she could pop in and out like the other person we know pops in and out right now. Like, but she would pop in and out on both of us. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? I'm sorry what I said about you. I was misunderstood about who you are. Um, 
I don't really want a relationship with both mm-hmm. of y'all, but I want to pop in and out every once in mm-hmm. a while. Had you been listening, you understand that we might be okay with that. Mm-hmm. But you're you you don't want both of us. You want Brian, and that's cool. But that's not what we want, right? You know what I'm saying? So, my question is: so long term, long term, what is the goal for you and Brian? Is it for you to move there, him to move here? The three of you under one roof. What's the end game? Yeah, my for me, long term, and we talked about it quite a bit. But long term is finding someone that that we vibe with, that, that that we connect with, and having us all live together, or or at the very least in very close proximity to each other. Uh, but the end goal would be to all of us being together and living together. Would the would that include? Um, Marriage on any level? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're we're both we've both been married before, mm-hmm. uh, and and we talk about it often that we're. Um, I don't really uh, when it comes to marriage, I, the actual like legal pieces to it, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the uh, full unions. religious backing okay. <laughs> behind uh, yeah behind behind, behind that. It's different, but I, but a spiritual union would definitely be something that uh, that we talked about and, and would be open to. Yeah, um, I uh, I'm actually moving November first. Squeeze me! <gasps> we caught you just in time. You did. You did. <laughs> awesome. So uh, my last day. It, it's around November first. Um, we're, I'm kind of like back and forth with uh, what my job wants to do. Mm-hmm. But it'll be like the within the first uh, half of November, um, and I'm leaning towards just doing it November first, and then letting them work things out on their own, you know. But um, yeah, so I'm moving up there, and we'll be smack dab, and then we'll be able to work out things the way we want to work them out, mm-hmm. and then we'll be able to mm-hmm. date together, and you know, it won't be any of those. Um, um, there might be some chats or whatever, but mm-hmm. we'll date. We'll go on dates a little bit sooner than normal, um, than a month or so. Although I'm fine with getting to know somebody for a couple of weeks before I go on a date with them, because I don't necessarily want to sit across the table from somebody. I'm like, oh, I really don't like you. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So and then as far as um the marriage piece, um, I I. I don't know. Marriage for me is, I don't know, maybe that's a part of me that's still kind of hard to kind of break away from. You know, I like the idea of the union, Mm -hmm. to Brian's point, the spiritual union. And I like the idea of um, um, the the, the, um, joining everything and things like that. It would be very hard to marry a third person. And so it's illegal, and so um, so um, I have to get my wording together. But, you know, the civil union or whatever they call it. <laughs> what are the Mormons doing across the way? Are they not getting married? No, I don't know. I and think the they, sister wives and everything are they not? Shit, don't ask me. I know sister wife. You looking at me like I got an answer? I don't know what the hell. I, I know. I think it's illegal. It is across the I board. Think it's uh, I'm pretty sure it's it's illegal in the U.S. Period. Right. Okay. Um. I think I don't know what they do. To be honest, Brian, do you know? Uh oh. I know what the Brian. Yeah. Do you know what the Mormons do? What Mormons do? Yeah. Well, do, do they no. get married in the I traditional know sense? I know when I watched the show Big Love <laughs> on HBO, what they was there was the the person that he was married to legally, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the other two wives were like civil. Civil unions. Oh, civil oh, okay. unions. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see. So there's a legal, a legal union and then a civil okay. union. That makes sense. Got it. Yeah, but yeah, I like the idea. I like the feeling of marriage. Like I miss that. Mm-hmm. I miss mm-hmm. that part of marriage. Mm-hmm. Like it's my husband. You know. What I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. And so I want to pry a little. Feel free not to answer. So, is the goal for? Are you all going to, like, just have one, like, big bed and everybody sleep together? Or you have, like, your room and she has her room and he comes in and... <laughs> <laughs> she is just laughing. 
<laughs> no, no, um, no. We would just have one bed. We might. Okay. We, we we actually talked about this before. We'd have a like a room where if somebody wants doesn't feel like sleeping in the bed, or if they don't feel like you know a little nightcap, a timeout room. Yeah, like a the personal space room. God. I don't appreciate Pasha shaking her head at me. Because she said timeout room. Like, we ain't grown goddamn what? people. You got to go. You got to have a timeout. Because some people yes, might have a different. you need a timeout. Some people might have a different sexual libido than mm-hmm. um, than I do or than what Brian and does. The, and, the, and that's what it's, the lift room is called. Go sit in the living room for a minute. Oh, my God. So, I also have And then get your tail in this bed and come to bed. Exactly. You know. That is fun. But, so, I have a question. Okay. So, Brian, I'll address it to you. And then, Naisha, you can go ahead and jump in. So, let's say you all are one big happy couple, right? No, trouble, 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 right? Trouble, thruple, thruple. Some people thruple. call it thruple. Okay. Mm-hmm. And let's say there's a falling out <laughs> between two <laughs> of the three. Mm. Uh-huh. And there's no re- reconciliation. Mm. What's the fall? Can you give? I'm, no, I'm curious I too. I don't know what what what, what is a relationship a fallout? fallout? A regular relationship fallout? Yeah, a breakup. Because everybody you mean, break up. People break up. I and just wanted to hear the the, the dynamics of who was having the breakup. But go ahead. It is two of the three. Yeah, we we talked about that. Uh, we talked about the fact that does we somebody have, have to go, kind of- or you all are going to sit down and work it out? You have to work it out. Well, we're going to try to work it out first. That's going. That's what we lead with. Is try to work it out, um, but to to the point though, people break up all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, the relationships break up for for big reasons, small reasons. I mean, hopefully, if if anything like that happened, it would be for a legitimate thing. Um, I can't see what that what would cause that because we talk about things so well, and I think that um, that uh, whoever whoever we were with would probably be you know, the same thought, right? Let's let's just talk it out. Let's see what, what could be done. But um, but anything can happen, right? Because you can't control anybody else. Um, but we talked about it. So if uh, if there was some kind of fallout like that, uh, we'd have to decide what the best course of action would be, whether our dynamic shifts to something different, um, uh, meaning not a triad. But uh, but that is something that we talked about doing um, as it happens and maybe talking to the, the partner and figuring out uh, what that would look like with them as opposed to us just deciding, hey, if, if there's a fallout out with that person, she got to go. You know, if, if if you two fall out, she got to go. If, if me and her fall out, she got to go. Um, Has there ever been a situation so we, where, um, through your dating process, you or Naisha thought a situation was good, but the other was like, no, and you two had to figure out. You know, <laughs> what was the process like? If if you're if, if Naisha's like, no, I like her, and you're like, no, nah, I don't like that. And Naisha's like, no, but I want to. And, she, and you're like, no. Like, how, what's your process? You draw straws or what? <laughs> Brian. Where's the play? I mean, sorry. We did have a situation <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what what situation are you talking about, man? Oh God. Um, <laughs> There's more than one. Well, no, it was only one. Um, in the beginning, Brian wasn't like really sold on her. He mm-hmm. wasn't aesthetically, he was not sold on her. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dang, uh, really, Brian, really, <laughs> man. You said aesthetically. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, been, you know, no, no, no. I was getting my next set of Gotcha. I was getting my next set of questions going, and all I heard was aesthetically, and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm sorry. (laughs) She wasn't cute. She wasn't cute. Oh, oh. okay. No, she wasn't that. Brian was the bitch ugly. (laughs) (laughs) She wasn't no. She was not ugly. Right. Okay. Naisha definitely she definitely connected with her for other reasons than just her looks. Yes. And so when when she showed me pictures, I was like. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have a, I didn't have that strong of a connection for the other things, which are also important to me. So um, to your point, what do, what do you do with that? Um, I was like, all right, well, let me get to know her. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, she she was she was attractive, but just not my type. Yeah. And so when we when I decided to get to know her, I was like, oh, she got she got this, she got that. Mm-hmm. You know, personality. She did some her. really like, special stuff, things. <laughs> <laughs> She just lit up over here, Brian. She I did. <laughs> I liked her spiritually. Gotcha. And yeah, ultimately, absolutely. what and, happened? And I understood. After, after getting to know, I understood what she was talking about, mm-hmm. and it made up for it. Made up for it because, in my opinion, if you only, if you're only with people because of how they look, 
you're gonna miss out on a whole lot of fail on a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Well, so it was a deal breaker. Okay, there was a deal breaker. Okay, Mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have four words that I would like you guys to define for us. All right. The the first word. The first word. Excuse me. Is pollen. See, I had my word right. Poly, poly, polygyny. Mm-hmm. Polygyny. Uh-huh. Polygyny. Polygyny. Okay, define that one for us. Right. Uh, well, polygyny, and I, I assume one of the other words might be polyandry. You know it was. <laughs> so I like Brian right. already. <laughs> Everybody likes Brian. <laughs> <laughs> My friends be like, Brian! <laughs> My friends be trying to beat me up for Brian. I'm like, I ain't even do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah polygyny uh and polyandry but polygyny fall under polygamy polygamy is like the umbrella for both polygamy is really just one person with multiple partners of the opposite sex um or multiple i believe it's multiple like while the husbands uh, i believe there has to be a, a marriage involved uh for polygamy and so polygyny is just one man and multiple women um, multiple wives. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit, I think, before we started podcasting. Solo Polly, mm-hmm. well, define that for us. <laughs> she said it's just somebody outside mm-hmm. uh, just screwing a whole bunch of And uh, I don't it's know. It's not to be screwing a whole bunch of people, but I, so solo Polly, in my opinion, would be someone who a free spirit. Isn't, Shanika, you are not in this lifestyle. Spirit. Shut your mouth. Didn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I would say it is free spirit. Yeah. Somebody who's deep and forming connections, but they not they may not define those connections as relationships. Like they might not say, "This is my girlfriend," "This is my boyfriend," um, but they're making connections um, as they see fit, and they consider themselves like their their primary partner. They're they're dating for themselves, not necessarily to uh, fulfill some relationship. Or or uh, with for someone else or with someone else, yeah, they're, they're just yeah. They're, it's almost like Got being it. single. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like being single, but forming real connections with people. And the last word Naisha did bring up, and I, what is this? Cuckle what? Cuckle cuckold. Cuckold. What what is this? It's just when a man a a, a man is giving the husband or wife sex while the other partner watches. <sighs> Alrighty then. That was my fourth word that came up. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested in... Um, can we talk about some of the benefits? Yeah. Because um, one of the things that come to my mind is everybody chipping in on bills and we all going to come up. So, is that... <laughs> <laughs> and talking about before, like some people view that as a, I don't want to use the word solution. They view it as an alternative to the deficiency in the number of men to women. Mm-hmm. Um, and they talk about the lifestyle and how it could be beneficial to mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. for the most part. So you don't have to be in a triad like we seek. Um, you could be in a poly relationship and you might not even meet the other woman. Um, you know about her, uh, mm-hmm. but you might not even meet her. You could be in a poly relationship where y'all can sit down uh, and they call it kitchen table poly, where y'all can sit down and you like talking and you hanging out or things like that. Um, it doesn't have to be a sexual relationship at all. Um, so the benefit for me, and I'll just talk about me personally, but I can piggyback off. Um, for me is A, being able to love how I want to love. Um, two, um, there's some really amazing people um, within the poly community. Uh, there's some crappy people too, but there's some really amazing people. The honesty, the transparency, mm-hmm. uh, the communication. There's no way you're going to be able to be in a poly relationship of any under any of the umbrella without proper communication. You're not going to be able to be in a non-monogamous relationship without the proper communication mm-hmm. because it ends... A successful one. Excuse me, yes, a successful one. Because you can be in one and yes. it's be raggedy as shit. Yes, and I done seen that in the swing community and I done seen that in the poly. I be reading, I be like, ooh, why? <laughs> yeah, communication is going to be all the way trash. Yeah, and, um, and it's a long... A lot of the poly people that I have, uh, particularly the ones that... Um, want a um like a couple type of thing, um or 
quad type of thing, they appreciate the long term of relationships. They're not out here like, okay, switch for a moment into what we what we face in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, what we face in Atlanta is men having a choice of 18 women. Mm -hmm. And not only do they have a choice of 18 women, but five of those women might be amazing. And the other, you know, 13 might be, you know, four might be crazy. Three might be, you know, unemployed um, and not trying to do anything. Mm -hmm. The other might be... Um, the these millennial city girl type types of women. Not that saying there's anything wrong with mm. the city girls type of women, <laughs> but that might not be what he wants. But the, that's that's the population that we have here in Atlanta, and so he's got his choices. He can go have fun with city girl. He can you know sneak in the house and eat the snacks with the one with the you know five kids, and then the other one he can you know he might get the quality that he needs from the five good women, you know, but there's a lot of different choices. And so not saying that there aren't choices within Polly, but to me, there's a benefit of saying of a man or a woman saying, hey, I'm going to see um, the crazy girl today because I need a little drama in my life. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to see, you know, the baby mama. And the next day, I'm going to see um, um, city girl because I want some fun. And then I'll see you this weekend. Good? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, And that might be just him dating, you know, or her dating, Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah. I mean, I think think the financial benefits is a thing, but that's that's not until later on in Mm -hmm. a relationship, you know, later when you're actually established. Um, I definitely think business ownership is a big thing. Um, I personally would not be with someone unless um, we can all benefit from each other. Uh, my, 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 what I seek from a woman is the same thing I seek from a man. And so, um, I mean, not all of the same thing, but you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is whether you're looking for a monogamous relationship, yes or no. The yeah. point that you made where if you can't build with someone, if you right. can't grow with someone, it really doesn't matter what type of relationship Right, it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. What about you, babe? What are the benefits for you? Because <laughs> that's uh, I, obvious. I mean, I'll be honest. <laughs> I believe it's mostly the ones you said. Um, I think doing, doing the dating piece and even just the initial connections you make, just having the ability to live in your truth um, is the benefit of uh, poly or even our monogamy. You know, for those that that find themselves cheating and all the drama behind it, for those that find themselves wanting to to the point that you find yourself wanting a relationship with a woman and a man at the same time, um, non-monogamy affords the opportunity to do that freely and openly and um, and as transparent as, as you can be in it. And so I think that that's a benefit just as, from an emotional and spiritual level. But then you have um, to the point of, you know, when you do, when you have people of the mindset of, let me hustle, you know, let me, Mm -hmm. let me work, let me, let me get this Mm -hmm. business going. Mm -hmm. Um, And you, and you combine all those efforts, there's Mm -hmm. going to be some financial benefit. Yeah. Um, And and even, you know, in most, most of the relationships, like when you talk about polygamy and all that, you, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of people talking about business and, and, and building. You, You hear that term a lot. But a lot of some people are building and some people are not. Yeah. You know, some people are just people they're just, just in it for the fun of it. They're in it for the activities of it, mm-hmm. you know, and and just to say, hey, I'm in this polydynamic. Mm-hmm. I got two girlfriends. Mm-hmm. You know, look what I look what I have and showing it off. Yeah. But what people should be talking about is, hey, how do we how do we now um Move forward. You know, provide for our yeah, family? Exactly. How do we how do we how do we how break do we, generational you know, curses? Build wealth. Yeah, exactly. All of that. But how do we build wealth together? And uh, and and uh, make sure that it's something that that happens long term. You know, put put legal things in place, all of that, to make make sure that things are protected and and have some longevity. So I think it's benefits all the way around. You know what I, I must say, and I don't think I've ever said this to Brian, is that the type of men that I definitely avoided um, when I first started seeking a poly relationship were the men that say. I want to build. I want a relationship. I want this. I want two women, but they do not have the 
capacity at all to take care of two women. Not financially, Mm -hmm. not sexually, not mentally, not spiritually. And so I reject a little bit of men that say, I want two women, but you're in your mother's basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I want two women, but I cannot, I don't even know what it means to love myself. Or I want two women, but I've not had any success at communicating in my monogamous relationships. You don't be trash. Yeah. So <laughs> in in researching whether online or um, asking, I specifically asked several men um, their position. I, I posed the scenario. If you could, if this was presented to you, would you be open to it? And... <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me, because you all are definitely engaged with more people who are who identify with this lifestyle. But it seems, or a lot of the feedback that I received was, they're interested in the sexual aspect. Oh, of yeah, it. absolutely. But I was yeah, told true, numerous times that though. I cannot deal with multiple women in any other capacity. It is... Um, a situation where I'm I'm doing my best to deal with the one I have at home as far as exactly. emotionally, um, you know, that. Is, is that uh, a sentiment in the community as a whole? Is that a problem as a whole in the yeah, community think- where men, men, and I'll just say men, are typically interested in the sexual aspect of it, not necessarily the relationship building aspect of it? I would say there's probably even some women that, that are interested in the sexual aspect of it. They want some care, too, mm-hmm. um, mixed in, but they may be interested in, in primarily the sexual aspect. Um, but to your point, I think men, in general, uh, fetishize poly mm-hmm. and non-monogamy. You know, they say, hey, I want this thing so they can get the sexual piece. But I would say that some of those men may not even know what they're asking for on the sexual side, you know, mm-hmm. because, and I joke about this often, like with my friends, uh, I've had friends that I tell, talk to about threesome and they're like, yeah, yeah, I want a threesome. And I've had people that have actually experienced it. They come back and say, man, three, it was cool, but I don't know if I want to do it again, because if you're trying to please two women, you know, uh, depending on how active they are or engaged with each other, they are. You know, it could be a challenge. So they they don't know exactly what they what they look asking for. Um, so to your point, I think that most people look at the sexual part and fetishize and say, "Hey, if I say I'm poly, I can get sex." And so therefore, mm. I'm going to come out and I'm going to say I'm poly. Um, you know, I'm building. I'm I'm looking for my two queens, and they use those kind of terms. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're not they're not mentally or emotionally ready. Or physically, because uh, I will speak, well, I will go out on a limb and say, a lot of them can't please one woman sexually, let alone. <laughs> well, I think it, more like, than one. Like Brian said, I think people hide behind the poly word, either one that they don't know exactly what it means, mm-hmm. or number two, it allows, it gives them a pass to do things mm-hmm. that... um that they want to do mm-hmm. without responsibility. To fulfill the fantasy. To fulfill and the, the, right. the, mm-hmm. the fetish, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you were yeah, to get yeah, into it... To the point about responsibility... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was just saying, to the point of responsibility, we all have that responsibility to be transparent and, and, and uh, expressive of what our real intentions are. You know, if you just want sex, like people say it all the time, women especially, if you just want sex, say that. Like, if you yeah. just want a friend with benefits, to just say that. If you wanted to be... Catch him uh, on the right uh, sexually, day, you just might uh, get it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mo- <laughs> and to be honest, I think that in, in some of these non-monogamous spaces, because there are a lot of women that are sexually positive, they just, they want that honesty. They want to know, okay, you want to hang out, you want to you want to, you want to connect, but you don't want to necessarily be in a relationship. And they may not want that either. Mm-hmm. They may not want the relationship either. Mm-hmm. And men don't realize that you can be honest Mm-hmm. And yeah. and will likely get what you want anyway. You know, if 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 what you're looking for is a sexual relationship, you tell someone, "Hey, I want a sexual relationship," and they say, "You know what? I don't really, I really don't want a real connection, a uh, major connection anyway." Because men are taught that all women want relationships, all women want these committed marriages. You know that that's what everybody wants. So men tend to lean toward whatever that language is to get 
get them what they want. Saying whatever but, whatever it is they th- you think they want you to hear. And I actually exactly. had a conversation yeah. right before I came in today, and I, I hadn't thought about this, but um, one of my friends made the comment. He said he wouldn't be interested in it, one, because he doesn't have the capacity to deal with more than one woman. Mm. Um, but right. he also said there's something about... And I'll say, use your your terminology, the unethical side of it, mm-hmm. the sneaking and, you know, that thrill, the mm-hmm. adrenaline rush. Yes. So he likes being unethical. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's something about there's, cheating. There's something about so he that. likes being unethical. Yes. Yes. He likes being a dirtbag. Mm. <laughs> no, what I'm saying he is. He likes being some, a dirty penis. Yeah. Some. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. As far oh, as people you. not necessarily you, embracing the whole. P- <laughs> poly relationships and saying, no, nah, I don't want to do that because right. there is a lot of communication, a lot of openness. Mm-hmm. There isn't that thrill because everybody knows. So he likes being a dirtbag. <laughs> Yeah. Because what if, well, if, if, he, if he think he's speaking that. for a lot of other people? If you, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're speaking for a lot of other men and women. Uh, yeah, but y'all know how thrilling our life is. We don't <laughs> because it seems like the thrill. The thrill is it's a what not thrill, it's a diff- not it's a not getting caught. It's not a yeah. You can get that thrill getting on a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's the same. I, I think yeah. it, it. I think it is it's the same. Adrenaline. It's, it's adrenaline. Same That's what you want. Adrenaline. You're an adrenaline. Yeah. It is adrenaline, but that, but that kind of drama. So I, I, I would call somebody like that. Not to talk about your friend, but I would no. call someone like that, <laughs> like an F boy or F girl, whoever, mm. whoever says. But hey, that's I representative wanted, of a, a segment of people, though. That's a part of that that say they're poly. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, but I think uh, for those, for me, like I, when I talk about the infidelity, and this is to me, um, like for those that that come into this journey and it's past, right? You have some people that, like for me, I had some infidelity in my marriage. But I felt horrible about it. I didn't enjoy the, the thrill of it at all. Like I was like, I just didn't know how else to express my non-monogamy. Right. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was any other way. I didn't know that you could be honest in it. And there was a whole community of people, black people, um, that that explore and and have been living this lifestyle for a number of years. I all I knew was cheating. That's all I knew, and I hated it. I I was like, well, I know I'm non-monogamous, but how do I how do I fulfill that that part of me without hurting my partner and it was a challenge for years and then when i found polly i was like you know what this is it this is how i can get away from being unethical and feeling bad about it and you know because i to be honest i thought i was the only one i thought i was i thought i i thought it was wrong for me to think the way i did i thought that it was uh i thought i was unique in that way and then i found a whole community of people and i was like wait a minute there's a whole you know, hundreds of people throughout the country that think, hell, thousands of people throughout the country that think like me, you know? And so um, that to me was eye-opening and uh, and a reason for me to not ever hurt someone and be and cheat on them and anything like that. I have a question. Mm-hmm. I have a question for, for you and Pasha. Okay. Oh, Uh-oh. Jesus. Passion first. Nope. It's for it's for both of you. <laughs> okay. Um, one, it's a two part question. Are you all in relationships? And two, um, when you started looking into your uh research on poly, um, did it look like something that was like a turn off from monogamy? Could you understand um the aspects of polyamory or the umbrella of non-monogamy um yeah Shanika (laughs) Miss Cock (laughs) she has on a cock hat she has a hat with a cock Cock. on it and the word cock yeah she does so I, I don't I don't know um <laughs> I choose to plead the fifth on the relationship question. Okay, no okay, problem. That part. Um. So doing the research. Are you pleading fifth too? Is I'm just making sure I'm clear. I'm exploring a relationship. Okay, okay, someone. okay. That's a good answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> okay, good, good answer. answer. Good answer. Good answer. Um. 
So in doing the research, I see the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. I definitely see the benefits of it. And given where I am in my life, um, the economical aspect of it Mm -hmm. looks very appealing. Mm -hmm. Everything else, nah. So (laughs) can I be in a relationship and take care of the kids and not be involved with anybody? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And you give me a place to stay, and I'll yeah, I'll, give I'll, you a place to stay. <laughs> well, it doesn't technically stay. work like that, I'm but I get what saying. you're saying. I can live in the house. I can take care of the kids. I can clean up, but I want to be. And you would be okay if, like, three days, involved three days a week, he's uh, gone. What? What? I don't want to be sexually involved with anybody. No, I'm saying <laughs> three days a week. He's you don't yeah. want his sex either. What? Mm. Ooh, that'll be the ish part. Can I go outside? <laughs> you can. You can. Good answer, Shanika. Good because answer. I'm looking for the economical part of it. So, ah, so I, I can, see. I can, I can completely embrace embrace the economical as, aspect of it. We building communities. So mm-hmm. I, I want to do my part. I do want a poly community to, to build I love a poly community. Community, yeah. Um, yeah. but when it comes to the sexual aspect of it, I I wouldn't want. And, to be a part of that. And I, I doing the research, mm-hmm. I depending on the dynamics, um, if it's two women, one man, one man, then there has to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, there has to be an attraction to that opposite sex. No. No. Because no, that's the cubist, the, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me. I thought the polycube. The polycube? No, no, I thought polycubes can have attraction. No, you're talking about parallel poly. Shit. He so, has a relationship with them separately, but yes. the two don't have a relationship together. Yeah. yeah. But in your in right. the triad that you're speaking of, then it would be the she got to give up the good to everybody. Okay, everybody. <laughs> so so ta- looking at it from the aspect of not having to be involved, I guess you know. Let me tell you something. What my should I say this? Yeah, you should. Oh my god! <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm always being put on the spot? I'm trying so to I'm out not. Where you shy about talking? No, because I'm. I'm trying to. Uh, this is a revelation for me as well. Okay. Um. I I get what Shanika, what you're saying in regards to the the communal aspect of it all, and I think that. Um, that could be a plus and that may be some something that people need to explore when it comes to that premise. For me, eh. But I'm thinking, you know, my thought of Polly for me would... I like, should be giving it up, huh? To everybody. Yes, <laughs> no, it would probably be two men and one oh, woman. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. So... That, but, that, but that I, but exists. I, but I still don't. At the same time, Pasha, would it be one bad Pasha, or would each person have their own you, room? You sound like Let's a explore. real. You sound like a real nigga right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> you're so <laughs> ignorant. You sound like what I'm saying? What ask? What, we because, ask Naisha the question. I'm asking you. I'm the host. Goddamn it! Read the marquee. <laughs> the fake marquee. <laughs> what I'm saying though is, like, I know for me having to deal, even if with with a like you said, a poly kitchen or the kitchen type, I don't. Want to deal with another female. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is that you have to say or what it is. I, mm, mm. That that to me, I I can. So you would like two men, and you would like for your other man to have a woman that you don't deal with. No, I want them to all have me. Polyandry. You want the woman to have you too? No, no woman. She wants two, two men. men. Two, just two men. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, men. that exists. And you don't want the two men to touch each other? No. Nope. You want to creep into their rooms of individually. Course. Yeah. yeah. I want to be to. I want to be hoish. That but that's not that's that is not, not hoish at all. I just want to put the ish on in cuz used it. <laughs> that's, that's not, not ho at all. Is ho. <laughs> not the ish. That's not ho at all. I mean, if you have a relationship with them, yeah. It's not it's not that at all. That 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 would probably be my ideal of. But I don't think I'm I don't think I am I don't think that poly lifestyle is for me. Okay. But if it was, <laughs> that would be what you would do. It'd be two means. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Well, now that you know that there's a there's a way for you to to have that ethically. Ethically, ethically. and honesty. And honestly. Okay. So we are at the end of this podcast. I mean, we want takeaways. Ah. So Brian, because you're all the way in the DMV, do you have any takeaways for us or the listeners? Um, the only takeaways I have is that, um, you know, for those that they haven't thought about 
non-monogamy in any kind, any capacity, uh, whether they used to cheat, are cheating, want to cheat. <laughs> um, maybe they should look at being honest. Read some read some books on non-monogamy, uh, like more than two, and there's a couple other. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can say. <laughs> the books, but <laughs> all right. So it's like one and two is, is a good one, and ethical slut is another one. Um, read up on slut. that, and, and the yeah, ethical slut is, a, is another good one. Uh, those are two that that a lot of people kind of come into probably reading, um, just to get some of the takeaways from those books, right? Which is they talk about jealousy, they talk about you know the transparency, they talk about being forthcoming and upfront and open and communicating all those kind of things that some of which are unique to poly. Um, they're very similar to what you would do in any relationship, but some of those things are definitely unique to poly. Um, and so that's, that's really it, if, you know, explore and research uh, as opposed to, you know, moving in, in an unethical way. Got you. Naisha. Mm. Takeaways. Um, Even for us to consider about the lifestyle. Mm. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Uh, we've given a lot here. <laughs> um, probably probably to... Um, it's not to fix anything. Mm. It can't fix your relationship. It can't fix your husband or wife's infidelities. Um, it can't fix a disconnection. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can't even fix what, the dating issues that we have in Atlanta. Um, poly has to be something that um, you have either been desiring, you realize that this, this is uh, something that is right for you, or it has to be something that you've taken the time to uh, research and decide, um, I want to do this. Um, my favorite question when people hit me up is, I think I want to try it. And I'm like, yeah, it's just an ice cream. It's not ice cream. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's for real. These are people's feelings. Mm -hmm. These are people's emotions. This is um, STDs. You're mm -hmm. not trying anything. Um, so um, that's what I would take away. I want you all to take away. All right, Shanika, all right. do you have any takeaways? One of the things I heard throughout the podcast is um, the work that's involved in it. It seems like... <laughs> There's yes. another level of work. Yes. There's another level of communication um, that's involved in or just just in mm -hmm. order to get everybody on board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the onboarding of the third person, <laughs> not a third, a partner, a partner, yes, a partner. A partner. Yeah. Yes, so third is almost like a bad word. It's like some people use it, but I just okay. like a I would hate to be like like I'm calling me a third because oh, I'm not like a third, third to nobody. Got yeah. It hierarchy and ranking and yeah that nature. absolutely okay, i got it i got it um yeah so it definitely seems to be another level of communication and another level of engagement mm -hmm. work um in the lifestyle um yeah and again um learning the different types of <laughs> relationships that fall under the, under the umbrella of poly so it it's 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 a lot. I I under I'll say I understand better why someone may gravitate towards the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Capacious. No. Thank no. Space. No. What? I actually learned a lot here today. Um, Good. And I understand that just like with anything, mm -hmm. it's. Good for some and good for mm -hmm. not some people. Yeah. So the takeaway that I have is no different than a regular relationship. It's it's a little bit more complex because mm -hmm. you are involving more people. Mm -hmm. um, but the words that I heard today was um, being open, honest communication. Mm -hmm. I think that's needed in any type of relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but I know it, it's more important when you are dealing with multiple people. And again, this is a lifestyle. So this is not a... I want to try. This is you are involving other people. Mm -hmm. You could potentially be involving other people in your bullshit if you're mm -hmm. just not here for mm -hmm. what the true intentions are. Mm -hmm. So just learn, you know, what it's who it's for and who it's not for. And if mm -hmm. it's not for you, then bow out gracefully. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
mm. or bow out before you even get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. On that note, we will uh, wrap this podcast up. Thanks for tuning in. And this we will... was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get with it you next good. time. Thank you, Naisha and Brian, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And until... Thank you for having us. Thank you. Until next time. Peace.